Welcome, everyone. This is our announcement. The April 2024 mentorship class will begin Friday, April 5th for Level 1 students, Friday, April 12th for Level 2 students. During this mentorship class, you will get included two half-hour private sessions with me, the Living the Mystical Life Daily Course Book, and the mentorship workbook that comes with it, all for one unique price. During this two months, you will have four two-hour classes with all the other people that are joining the mentorship class. You will meet unique people and have an opportunity to learn the material in such a unique way. I look forward to seeing you all there. And for all of you that have been wanting to have a chance where you have private mentorship, here's your opportunity. An opportunity to get out of the static stasis that may be holding you back, finding a way to have your mystical life your ceremonial life enhanced and improve those psychic skills, learn how to use the Akashic Records and all the other tools, tips, and techniques that go with learning the basics to the master's level. Hi, everybody. An announcement, we are open to have private sessions. I am opening new dates on my schedule. We have a brand new automated booking system. No more long waits for confirming the booking. That's right, everyone. Automated booking system is here. Go to andrewbartsis.com. I look forward to seeing you in a private session. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the planned show of the No No Plan Show. I'd like to welcome, firstly, Laura Massey. Hello. Hi, Dale. Hi, everyone. Hello. Are you ready? Are you ready for this No Plan Show, Laura? <laughs> it's it's a bit confusing when nothing's it's... planned. So yeah, <laughs> it's just live by the seat of your pants, show, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Whatever so what's comes going up. On with so what's going on with you lately, Laura? What have you been up to? Oh, as if you didn't know. So <laughs> <laughs> I went up to Dales for the weekend and we took the Lucia Light on a bit of a tour, didn't we, of yes. York. So um, we have the Lucia Light over here in the UK. We'd like to get another one later when, when we can do. But we were giving sessions in a, a wellness festival with the PMF mats and the Lucia light. So we were giving people 20 minute sessions on the Lucia light. And it was really great, wasn't it, Dale, the, the looks on their faces and their feedback when they came out from their 20 minutes under yes. the light because they were blown away. And even in 20 minutes, people were having incredible mystical experience. One lady met her guides that she hadn't met before. Uh, somebody went on a complete journey. Um, they absolutely loved it. And it's like the light knows the amount of time it has. So everybody sort of completed their journey or got what they wanted from it. So we're really excited about doing this because we think, obviously, we think combined should be out there for as many people as possible. The Lucia light is part of the combined. We think there's only one other Lucia light in the UK from research, don't we, Dale? Yes. So we plan to do more of this. So if you're in York and listening to the show, we're going back in April next month, I think. Um, we're planning to anyway, and then we'll take it round the UK as well. Um, and with the mats, potentially, and also with combined. But we just like to get people to 
see how you can have uh, the no drug mystical experience, as Andrew calls it. Yes. And that so, was yeah, it. Poor Dale had to put up with me staying with him and coming in like his mother. <laughs> <laughs> she rearranged all my house. My house has been turned around, flipped oh, really? upside down, cleaned everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. Dale's actually yes. younger than my sons. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do it. <laughs> so why don't we talk a little bit about the paranormal and the combine coming up um, yes. soon, Laura? Yeah, yeah. So in June, we have got... Um, a big event coming in the UK in York. You all know we probably we've been to York a few times now. It works really well for us. We found a good, comfortable uh, accommodation in a hotel. So we're doing an event that is two days with high foo, high intensity frequency ultrasound for ladies. So that will be a sacred feminine retreat, which I'm doing for two days. And part of that, you get the high foo, which is for vaginal tightening uh, which I've had and it's brilliant so I can recommend it um, there's more about that on the website if you want to have a look then four days with the paranormal so Michelle Stan and John will be coming over we're very excited about that and they'll be doing two days training in the hotel um, and you will get equipment in the cost of the ticket so we're we're throwing in uh night vision goggles um camera and so on there's two other pieces of equipment and um all the, all the stuff you'd need for like ghost hunting or recording the paranormal and then there's two days out in the field where you practice with your equipment with them and then go on a tour of york both evenings uh to the most haunted places then five days of combined therapy, and that is using Lucia light, infrared sauna, flotation pod, cranial sacral therapy, psychic surgery, shamanic healing if you want it, hyperbaric chambers, PMF mat, Lucia light. What have I missed, Dale? There's loads in what we do. We always, because we're in the hotel, we have access to that room the whole time. So actually, if you come on this, you get extra time. So we allow people to go back in the evening in the room, go under the light, use the mat and so on. Because we'd all be staying in one place if you chose to stay in that hotel. And you can have the whole package all the way through from the high food paranormal and the five days combined if you want to it's all on the website easiest way to get to it is to do twofeathersmedicine.com forward slash combined healing and it's all yeah. there for you or just email me laura two feathers at gmail.com i'm if gonna you'd like to, now dale if you'd, do you want to if speak you'd, sorry, yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to meet the big bear himself andrew and the, the medium bear myself and laura as well we'll be there and for me, like working in combined, um, going under the system, it is fascinating and incredible. Some of the, I'd say, results you get from people going there, they go there with a problem or they'll go there where there's a part of them suppressed and they'll come out the other side and you see a glow and a smile. Like some of the miracles we have seen, it happens each day. And the funny thing is each and every time we go, there's so many different experiences and so many things happening. So if you want to get yourself off the no plan plan and plan something where you're going to invest in your tr yourself for your own recovery, your own journey, your own growth, come on to Combined and join us. Um, and you can meet us all, have lunch with us all, have dinner with us all and have a laugh and yeah. And get to ask Andrew all the questions you want to. <laughs> ask what your purpose is. <laughs> yes. <I'll> <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's just with us the whole time. So yes. um yeah, it's great. We'll all hang out together. As Tina Winter in the chat knows, hi, Tina. Um, she came with us, uh, was it last year? No, January, and trained. We do training as well if you want to. So Tina is now part of our team, although based in the US. So hopefully you'll get over Tina. Um, and we also have Richard, Richard Winters around. He does Reiki sessions and so on and does the transport. So we are expanding slowly. And we're, yes. it's all—it's actually this is all down to Andrew and David, 
And they've been doing combined for many years. And I went to it, it in Barbados when it was set up there. And I know you think, well, we're always going on about it. I tell you what, because it's done so much good for so many people that that's why we do talk about it. We do encourage people to do it. Um, it's a phenomenal system that they set up. And we really want to make it successful over here. And we'll get to the US hopefully this year as well. Beautiful. And as well, just before we fully go into everything, if anybody would like a one-to-one -one psychic surgery session with myself, I've I had a bit of a break from psychic surgery sessions over the last month, but I am back doing one-to-one -one psychic surgery. So if you're feeling lost, out of your body, anxious, sad, depressed, or you've got something going on in the unseen, um, visit daletobin.com and book a private session with me. I'm also going to be bringing more dates for the psychic surgery training again. So if you want to learn how to be an energy reader, how to scan yourself, how to look and read other people and learn the, the incredible psychic surgery skills. So there'll be dates coming up there as well. So let's go forward, Laura Massey. What are we going to go into first? So I'm going, what, I'm going into the questions in the chat because I love you know. interacting with the audience here. Yes, 3DEM. Three, you can ask questions in here. Yep. What's that one? Can you discuss the flood of internationals and what will happen to them and us? Oh, you mean like immigrants? Refugees? Do you think that's what they mean? I believe so, yeah. Um, so, do you want to answer well, that? Well, my, my perspective is they will use that to, the system uses that to instill you with fear and to cause division. So it's a, a case of divide and conquer yet again, putting us against man, putting us, us against our fellow man, if you want to put it that way. Um, it's not unity consciousness, is it? The way that people are displaced from their homes and then forced to go to other places. So for me, I don't get terribly involved in what's going on on the news. I am aware of it. In the UK, they had a huge refugee thing making out that they would take our jobs and on and on and on, putting fear in people. And generally, it's, it's just not a good feeling thing to have. It's not about the fifth world of peace. So... Yes. What will happen to, I mean, first of all, do how much of that is true? I don't know. I don't know. Any of us really know. I just, I just know or feel the intention behind what they do. And there's been a flood of refugees happening since the start of this planet. We're all refugees as well. And that's what they try and imprint into us. And this is something Andrew's talked about many times is like we, the reason why we have passports and you have to apply to move to another country is because they want us all split up as soul family. They want us confused. And again, this is something what the system does to try and confuse more people, start ma making sure less people awaken by moving them from their ancestral homelands to a different one and trying to cause a soup of different, I'd say, ancestral soul families which shouldn't be there in the first place. So the best way to, from personally dealing with that, de-weaponize, like Laura said, turn the news off if it's causing you some sort of fear or panic or adrenal turn it off, de-weaponize it, don't allow it as part of your greater journey. And that's something, obviously, Andrew's teachings, our teachings have brought forward, how important that is. Don't let it trigger you. Dale, I wonder if there's any karma involved in that as well. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, yes, ancestral karma. Yeah, the thing is, as Dale says, don't get, don't get drawn in. Be aware, don't bury your head in the sand, but um, always live with the energies of the earth. That's that's the way for that's what we teach anyway. Okay, thank you for that. Can we do a class on clearing brain parts like the clonic sessions? Um, we could wait to see if Andrew will get on the show. He got held up. Mm -hmm. Maybe do that later. That sounds like fun. I believe we're going to be doing the Unascended Master Show, aren't we? Where we'll be offering, I think oh, we're going to yes. be doing, yeah. So yes. we, you we will get chance. Like that, yeah. Go ahead, Laura, sorry. No, no, we are, you're right, go yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you will, uh, so we have the Unascended Master Show coming up every two weeks. So you'll get, with me and Laura will put it forward. That there's going to be a colonic brain show, <laughs> clearing the brain out. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, does quantum healing borrow energy from the future? Hmm. So anything like quantum healing, like I learned in Reiki, like you learn with Andrew, is you can send healing backwards and forwards. But borrowing energy from the future, I don't know whether borrow would be the word I'd, I'd use because that suggests you take it. But energy is infinite, isn't it? How do you read that, Dale? Um, I'd say, so when you're sending a treatment backwards and forwards in time, you're positively manipulating a future potential and you can send energy of positivity to that future self, energy of change. Um, I don't think borrowing would be the best word for that. I, I would say influencing or, yeah, you can send energy forward in time. You can send pockets of bundles of energy you can store, say, over a period of two weeks, then you can send it forward. So, yes, exactly the same as me sending lower energy. You can do exactly send it to the future or the past if you want. Um but borrowing, I think, is, is, yeah, it's a bit of a different word, isn't it, Laura, for that? Well, borrowing suggests you have to give it back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm just having this. I'll take it back next year. <laughs> I'll give it back to you with interest. Um, yes. Because yeah. <laughs> energy will fill the hole that energy leaves if you take it. So, yes. yeah. So any more questions? So if you've got any questions you want to ask Laura or myself, drop them into the chat. This is a no plan plan show. Um, have we got any others going on there? The clonic sessions were amazing. Still going. Wow. <laughs> How long ago <laughs> was that, Nina? I hope you're okay. <laughs> you had some big shifts then. Yeah, we'll be doing more of those. We love doing those. So why don't we talk about the start of the year then, Laura? And we've got the we've got had the eclipse. We've got the solar flares. We've had the equinox. We've got Mars farting on Jupiter. So, what has it been like? Let's talk about the start of the year. And it would be great for everyone listening. How's your start of the year been coming from uh, the end of the year to the equinox? What has it been like for you? How has it been yeah. for you, Laura? How's it been for me? Um, it's been um, a bit of a ride. Not easy. Uh, along with a lot of other people. Uh, what does make it easier for me is talking to spirit. And when I first started to live on my own three years ago, bear in mind I hadn't lived on my own for, oh, I don't know, 59, 60 years. Um, it was quite a shock to me. And I kept saying to Andrew, I'm lonely and lonely, moaning I was lonely. And he'd say to me, talk to spirit, talk to spirit. Well, that message has finally got through, and it really is that that has helped me through the last few weeks with all the turmoil. Now, whether you put the turmoil down to, what's the current one? Mercury retrograde. I don't know. I remember Andrew saying the energies weren't going to get any easier for the moment. It doesn't help in the UK because down south we've had so much rain and not seen much sun. And people who love sun like me are prone to get just a little bit down as well. So we've got that, as you say, the solar flares. But you do have to look at things with an eagle eye view and remember that everything passes and life can be difficult. But again, not to get too drawn in and remember that there's it's it life is a never ending story, isn't it? And there's not a like a completion of something. We keep rolling on. And the universe, if you focus on co-creating with the universe um, and working with the earth energies and working with spirit, whatever form that's in, working with your good, true and beautiful ancestors is what Dale and I do, then it does help a lot. I'm not going, I'm not saying it solves all your problems. I'm saying what it does, it gives you another perspective to look at life with. And that has really helped me. And what about yeah. you? That's been has been up and down for you too, hasn't it? Yeah. So I've gone through a se separation um, in the last six months to new, living in a new place, um, and it has been hard. But it feels like for me, it's always going back to the 
in a work schedule and like through the day I'll probably do an hour 90 minutes of inner work on myself and that reminds me of why I do it and sometimes I get lost and and I get lost at times but then I'll go back and like prayer for me is one of the most important things at the moment as well for me um so there'll be times where I'll be setting an intention of what I want back in my life what I want to remember and what I want to focus on and over the last year prayer has changed so much for me because it really helps me express my true self and like Laura said talking to spirit is important talking to your ancestors the grandmothers and grandfathers even people who have crossed over like my my grand grandmother my dad all sorts of different people come and visit me and just letting me know they're still there but there's still me the human self trying to figure my own journey out while still connecting to spirit and having great people around you is important and it puts things into perspective when you've got people who care about you around you people who respect you people who don't give you a bullshit sandwich and like <laughs> having a Laura Andrew and everyone around me who have helped me who've gave me the advice let me let me speak my truth about what's going on or something happening and so on um so for me it's been about i'd say loads of deaths and loads of births but still loads of deaths going on um then coming into the summer it's going to be about for me is where i'm going to try and do so, a lot more ritual fire ritual um and start really seeding a new me um and i remember in one of my ayahuasca journeys i had a womb and it all makes sense now because that womb was me birthing myself so i was pregnant <laughs> And even though I'm still going through the birthing process, there will be an afterbirth and there will be a, a birth party. <laughs> and we will have a dance. <laughs> we will. So I'd just like to welcome Dale's mum to the chat. Nicole Tobin, welcome to the show. Hi, mum. <laughs> it is your mum, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. There is another Nicole. Okay. So how do you talk to spirit? Oh, so the way it, there's various ways. So probably for you, I think you do a little bit already from the time we've chatted, but I talk to them just like they're my friends next to me. So and different types of spirit I talk to in different ways. So let's talk about loved ones who have passed on. Um, I know they're around me. I don't see. I'm not I, I haven't got that gift of sight, but I feel probably a bit like Dale, I feel and I sense, so I'm clairsentient, and I hear at times as well. So I would do things like after my mum passed, um, we had a particular ritual, you know, we might sit down, have a cup of tea in the afternoon with a particular biscuit, type of biscuit she liked. So I will buy those biscuits um, now and again, make a cup of tea for her, put her opposite me where she used to sit and just chat away to her as if she was there because in my world she is. Um, then there's talking to um, great mystery and great spirit at the universe because I was trained sort of by Andrew and um, like Dale, we do a lot of the shamanic stuff, particularly the indigenous. Um, so I would do that around a fire um, and in prayers morning and evening um, I would open sacred space and we include, uh, as the indigenous did, all the natural elements. So we're dealing with air, fire, earth and water when we open sacred space. And I would call in the seven directions. They're the compass points. I would call in the four winds. I would call in my ancestors. I would call in my guides, my guardians, my angels, anything that you have a belief in in, in the unseen world will work for you. Um, so another way is to do it with prayers, another way of ceremony like that, opening sacred space, talking to them around the fire, but just including them in your life. Because I used to think they were a long way away and they're not, they're right here. And they will come back and talk to you. And if you can't hear it in this realm, you, you will get messages in your dreams if you look for them, or synchronicities that happen, they do get back to you. I have so many incidences where I've asked a question and got an answer or, or been told certain things. Um, and I worked out, I said to Dale the other day, I worked out that 
my psychic ability was actually what spirit was telling me. Other people might, might see being psychic different, but for me, it's like a direct communication to spirit. And there, there's it's such a vast unseen world and we've got so much support out there. I like encourage everybody to talk to spirit, but start off with you, with your own ancestors. That's always a good one. Beautiful. Dale? Yes. Dale? Dale? Dale. <laughs> All right. So, so I, I want to share something here, but I think I shared it like maybe, maybe three months ago, um, four months ago. So there was, I had a dream a long time ago when my grandma died. Um, and I was basically, it was a visitation dream where I was next to a Ferris wheel. It was like a Ferris wheel, but it was made out of the flower of life and it had loads of light to it. Um, then all of a sudden, last year in September, I went to an event. I think it was a Nessie Gomez event to watch her play live with my friend. And this was after the separation. Um, and I basically walked down the street and I looked to the right and there was a Ferris wheel with the flower of life all intact with lit up. And I had a deja vu from a dream 18 years ago where my gran showed herself and I was sat by that Ferris wheel with her. So as I was walking, I looked to the side and that Ferris wheel was there. So I had a realization that I dreamt that 18 years ago and it was her telling me that I'm on the right path. Um, and that, that was phenomenal that when that happened. And for me, connecting to spirit, it's all about you have to really trust yourself. It's not about competing with anyone. It's about allowing your soul spark to be present in the voice and allowing you to connect to who you are as a soul, allowing yourself to let go of distractions, burdens, worry. Start saying to your body what you need to let go of before you go into the prayer to talk to spirit. So I let go of anxiety. I let go of worry in this moment. I allow the freedom of my unique voice to step forward as I connect to the ancestral grandmothers and grandfathers. I create this fire within my heart and I burn this fire hot and hot. So I speak my words of wisdom. Universe, listen to me. I'm struggling today. I need help. I need words of wisdom. I call to the thousands of grandfathers and grandmothers out there to listen, to hear my message. All, all sorts of examples like that you can do. It's about realizing that everyone is so special. There's no, no one better than the other. You've got to find your own unique voice. I think that's the best way to, to describe that one. Yeah, absolutely. And you have your own unique connection. Yes, yes, yes. That's what it is. And, and you'll, you'll find your own way of doing it. But I, I think it's, it's how you would treat a friend, which is respectfully and with unconditional love. Yes. Um, I mean, there's, you can go e e deeper in it is to be like start using some form of spiritual hygiene or let's say some discernment with who you're talking to in the unseen. Yes. And if the energies don't feel good, then they're not good. Yes. They're not good. You leave them alone. And sometimes you can, to get even deeper in that, sometimes you can get imposters. I mean, I don't know about you, Dale, but so many people here have dreamt of Andrew and sometimes he can come, but it's not him in a dream. And you know it's an imposter. Or I've had beings come pretending to be my mum or my dad. Because they've both passed. And then I realise it's not them. And that in that case, you've got an imposter that's, you know, just wanting to take some of your energy. Yes, so you yes. have to be a little bit of aware and um, protect yourself, which is you can do quite simply with some prayers. Ask for protection. Ask for a bubble of uh, energy around you that's protective energy or fill that bubble with the light of, of the grandfather's son. There's many ways of doing that. We talk about that on boot camp. Yes. And the, um, what was I going to add there, was the realisation that the, gr the grandmothers and the grandfathers they're with us at all times and there's no separation there. It's only our mind and our ego, our parasympathetic, which is allowed a separation between the realities and they listen and they're with you. Every single cry and tear and pain you've gone through, they've been by your side, listening to you, hearing you. And it's about you reconnecting to know that. And that was something which gave me a completely unique, different approach with the ancestors. 
seeing them as family, as friends, as not something higher up in the spirit, mm -hmm. but just part of your unit, part of your team. And they're there, they're like having a laugh with you. And you've got to allow yourself to go into that space where you're not in expectations, you're not treating them as angels. And Angelics and Archangel Michael has created hierarchy. So people see Angelics and ancestors as above here and the see you feel down here, but you have to allow yourself to be all part of the same line. And that was the biggest growth for me seeing that, not being overwhelmed by their energy, actually being in my body, speaking to them. Um, and a lot of people get overwhelmed with it. Oh, I can't do it. I'm listening to my inner, inner head now. Um, so spiritual hygiene is important because you start, like Laura said, clearing out the imposter syndrome of yourself as well. All those versions of you which try and m mimic or control or try and gaslight you or shadow, basically. Um, so know thyself. That's probably the best one of the best ways as well, knowing who you truly are. Yeah, and I think if you you can do an usually an out loud prayer to um, it, so your soul can hear the sound of your own voice, not just so because they hear you even in your head, but out loud it's we call it name it to claim it the out loud voice and that that is very important and speak from your heart too um yes. and it's a co-creation i mean prayer prayer or communication with the unseen world is a communication with them and it works both ways um they can help you in many ways but we do have to ask but we do have to sit as a co-creation. We've got to go out there and make the effort too. And then the ancestors, well, as Stel's saying, they are <laughs> like the most incredible beings when you think what they went through with their time on Earth. Not all of them have been on Earth, but those, let's, let's say our DNA lineage ancestors have been on Earth and what we planned with them before we all came what they went through to get us all here. And if you just want to blow your mind, just try and do your family tree and just go back seven generations where there's over a thousand grandparents that made you the particular being that's here now. And that, that I just find that mind blowing. And that's only um, seven generations that yes. creates that and go back further and further. And how many thousands of people came together just so you could be here now doing your great yes. work and we all chose to be here at this time of the great awakening and great remembering so in one you know in one form or another so your ancestors are just like so that they're going they want to support you they want to help you they want you to talk to them to acknowledge them but some of them have problems still <laughs> so, <laughs> that's where Gone. As you said that one of my one of my guys was saying mastering the art of duality. No, mastering the art of singularity and coming out of duality. Like as you were saying that, and I was like, "Yeah, that's like what I need to do at the moment." <laughs> but no, some of, I was thinking more of some are some are still dealing with karma, well, and, and we're still dealing yes. with some of the ancestral debt that they passed on to us. It doesn't make them all bad. It just yeah. means that's something in the lineage that we have the. If we're awake and aware enough, we've got that responsibility to clear it in whatever yes. form that is which is dealing with that issue ourselves. And when you do that, loads of you know this, it clears it clears the line. So and anything you do now to heal yourself will, will help clear your lineage. There, there's so many things, you know, that's just a very overall um, point of view. And so what I'd recommend for people as well is, so something over a long period of time I've learned is familiarizing yourself with your team. So it can be what, starting with one guide, one spirit guide, put them on a seat next to you, observe how they feel to you. The next day, put them on the seat again until you actually have them in your knowingness. And this is something what is completely changed for me where when I first my, saw my first dragon 10, 11 years ago, flying in, in one of the solstice events, um, I, that, I then actually had a reading with Andrew and he was talking about it's time to start bringing your ancestors, your dragons into knowingness now. Because once you're in knowingness with the ancestors, 
it's just a knowing there's no duality there so i i reckon for people out there listening uh, uh, set up that ancestral meeting where you have them and speak to them start observing them and actually there will be a point where you've got so much trust with yourself you can shut your eyes and you can just feel them like you can see or feel whatever word works for you um there was a spirit guide of mine which was i think he's from 500 years ago i kept seeing him and he's got like a tie and a suit on uh, and he was in andrew's mentorship class and i asked him because i just had this feeling that he was my daughter's dad in another lifetime because he was always talking about opal my daughter so I, went, I asked andrew and andrew said uh, this spirit guide 500 years ago was my dad's 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 basically daughter um and that was beautiful to actually have that. <laughs> Have part of someone who's come back from the lineage to come into our lineage again. There she is. Do you want to say hi, Opal? There she is. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. Like it really does make me it excites me speaking about this, Laura. I love it. Oh uh, well, I think it's our favourite topic, isn't it? Ancestors. I, think so I mean, as well. <laughs> you, I mean, dance with them. You know, go out and dance with them. Don't even have to light a fire. Just dance with the ancestors. Walk with them. Um, do anything. Go, go shopping with them. Go play golf. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are with you. But also do an offering. But, you know, that's one of the basic things, isn't it, Dale? Right back to the beginning was what I was doing, was um, giving offerings to the ancestors of the land. And I will give them a little plate of food, a glass of milk, a biscuit, um, a little cup of um, slow gin, and interact with the ancestors of your land. It makes a difference. It's just amazing how good it can feel, especially if you create like a little outdoor prayer area where you say your prayers or or do some prayer ties or tie ribbons in a tree and have that as your prayer tree. Anything like that is going to give you connection to the ancestors of the land. And you can really, I can feel the difference that makes when you acknowledge. You're acknowledging there's, there's beings in the unseen who want to work with you. I mean, what, an, what a world this would be if everybody recognize there was an unseen world and not just that but actually wanted to interact that would just that would just change everything wouldn't it if everybody just interacted with the yes. unseen world in in equal energy exchange in unconditional love but yeah we can do that just for the the, the ones who have passed on yes and then we can do it for the for the trees people do it with prayers to trees, to flowers, it's it's unlimited because it's an unlimited universe. There we go. And, and you can set up your own little space, your own little prayer ground, like Laura was saying, um, and just think of adding energy to that each day, adding more prayer to each day. And this is, there's some parts of obviously like the church, which I really respect is a prayer, the constant prayer and their realities and doing that and having some sort of, remembrance place where you can put pictures of your your lost loved ones or your grandmas or your or anything like that just have them there or have some symbols and just bring them little offerings and um yeah it's truly special it really is yeah it is and so means the time to do it like when the veil is thinnest but there's but it doesn't have to be a time when the veil is thinnest you can have places on the land where the veil is thinner or, or in mist so it will just enhance the energies full moon yes because the energies are enhanced um, between the land and the sea is, is another area where the the energies are enhanced for your connection so but it doesn't have to be that you can just you can do it anywhere anytime the ancestors are with you at all times and that's that is the beauty of it and so, so yeah, co-create with them. Co-create with people you you know that have passed on that um, that would give you comfort too, and you can give them comfort. So it's just like they're here, really, and we can't see them. Yes, although some people can. 
Co-create with the equinox energies. Is that the one you're looking at, Dale? Uh, yes, that's what I was just going to... Um, Julia Jonathan, how do you co-create the equinox energies? Laurie, do you want to go first with that? With the fire, usually, but the big thing about equinox is that it's letting go of fraud time. Yes, it's all the other things, new beginning, the day's getting longer, and so on. It, and putting things to balance, yes. But most of all, for me, the energies represent getting out of fraud time. And to do that, you want to step into a no time zone, into void. So, and the best way to do that is in prayer or ceremony and go into no time then. And then work your magic with your prayer and with your co-creation with the ancestors then. So, yeah, and getting out of fraud time, which is enforced upon us. And see, for me, it's like spring equinox is a, a death and a rebirth. It's a, got a lot of mm. death and rebirth energy about it. Going from the, the death of, and the trees, obviously, about to then grow new leaves, new life. Um, so for me, it's all about the dying process, what you've learned from winter, what you've learned from that hibernation zone of learning about yourself um, and what do you want going forward when you're planting the spring seeds. So. Um, so allowing yourself to start thinking what do I want to seed into the spring and allow it to grow into summer? Start observing yourself. Where do I want to be in summer? What plants and what dreams do I want to start co-creating with? That's what spring equinox is all about. Seeing the summer when we have the most amount of light. What can you allow yourself to go into to change and go through the great change and not allow the summer to destroy you? A lot of people get triggered by summer solstice energies or going into Lionsgate. But it's about de-weaponizing all of that and seeing it as data, seeing it as a teacher. What is it showing you? What are you avoiding? And this is some questions you need to ask yourself over spring. I ask myself this all the time. What am I avoiding in my reality? And like Laura said, the eagle eye point of view is so important going into a spring equinox. Seeing yourself from another perspective. Are you growing? Are you going into the same pa habit patterns? Are you not going into the shaman's death like in the contra evocation where people go through shit and they go back into old shells? And I see it time and time again. When you go through a shit stage, you go back to the old selves, which had comfort and, and, and like, yeah, comfort basically. So allow yourself to come out of the shell, stop being the hermit and enjoy Equinox. Have fun, smile, have fires, look after yourself, enjoy life. Don't be a serious ass. <laughs> Those are some of the recommendations I would advise. <laughs> well, as it's a no plan plan, I've got last year's spring equinox prayer I wrote, Dale. It's not long. Should I read it? Go ahead. Yeah, it, go ahead. Yeah. So, spring equinox prayer. So before yeah. Laura does yeah. this, I'd like you to close your eyes and really feel the words and just breathe. Allow yourself to get centered in your heart. And feel the ancestors around you. And see your ancestral fire. And step into that no time place now. Drop all distractions. Put your phone away. With the very essence of this sovereign being present in my heart, in this eternal moment of now, I co-create this prayer of balance with all that is, was, and will be. I call to great mystery and great spirit to hear this I am photonic being of light share these sacred words. In this time, as daylight and nightlight equalize, I connect myself to the natural way of living. I make the sovereign choice to decalibrate from fraud time and recalibrate to universal time, to that unlimited point of view. For, like my ancestors, it is my birthright 
to take my first imprints from the movements of the sun, the moon and the stars and align myself with natural co-creation with Earth Mother and all sentient kind. In this sacred equinox space, the global narrative is outside of my time-space equation. The system knows nothing of the deep listening and deep presence that is available to us all, should we so choose. I turn to feel the sun on my face and allow it to illuminate my internal self so I may release all my ties to fraud time and find my pure source stream connection. So I may see all programs and conditioning working against this sovereign I am presence so they may be released to this new era where the days grow longer with increased light. I call to Grandfather Sun to connect me to all suns ever in existence so I may feel the fullness of my connection and release old energies no longer a resonant match for my frequencies. I ask the solar rays to expose all that keeps me hidden from my true authentic self. I turn to my past, present and future ancestors as on this day of balance of the North and South Poles, recognising the balancing of the incarnation in, and reincarnating energies at this time and allow the love of the universal ancestors to flow through me. This is my hour of power for my connection to you. And I turn to Earth Mother as I make the sovereign choice to navigate the false light hologram as I transition from fraud time and honour and work with the Earth's natural cycles. For I am in the world but of the Earth. I hear your sacred stories once again as I let go of domination and control, walking upon your warming Earth as you bring renewed life in your infinite cycle of death and rebirth. I turn to all soul shards lost in fraud time and no time and use the heightened frequency of the equinox energy to recalibrate soul shards who chose unity consciousness, who choose unity consciousness and disentangle from those not ready to make this choice at this time. I turn to all sentient beings on and off earth who hold the frequency of unity consciousness. I acknowledge you live in a different time space equation yet we all share the dream time. Come share this dream time equinox of prayer. I turn to my sacred inner self and with self inner dialogue, I align myself to be in balance with the earth's natural frequencies. I recalibrate all my belief systems to that of earth mother and declare my unity consciousness expression as a disentangled observer of the self. So I may do the internal internal, eternal inner work. I turn to my sacred equinox fire. I acknowledge with heart space joy the value of the infinite opportunities that this is this fire's gift. So if I choose to interact with this portal in no time. With this prayer, I honour all that is natural co-creative living on earth. And as a modern shaman, I know we can feel, see, hear, taste and sense it all at first hand outside of fraud time, with a wonderment and joy, for it is our rite of passage to have this natural experience of the spring equinox, and I claim that in the infinite expression of this prayer. Aho. Aho. Good. Beautiful. Feel free to use that in your equinox prayers, because it doesn't have to be done at equinox, just like all the other celebrations. You can... You can carry that energy backwards and forwards in time, can't you, Dale? Yes. So what I'd like you to do, that was incredible, Laura. Incredible. Um, I'd like you just to picture a fire in your heart. Hmm. And I'd like you to picture you creating a new fire with new wood. And all the prayers of all the ceremonies, all the intentions you've done are placed into the wood. So all of that great work you've done in the past, present and future. And the essence is placed into the wood, making the wood sacred. And I'd like you to see yourself lighting the fire in your heart. And just allow your ancestors to form a circle around this fire. 
And this is the circle of connecting to them. This is a connection point to remind you of the singularity of who you are. Source connected to all that is, was, and ever will be in the sacred moment of here and now, allowing the uniqueness and expression of your soul to come forward into the deeper layers of you, those forgotten layers of self. And just allow the fire to grow and grow until this fire is 10, 11 foot tall and all your ancestors are stood there listening to your words of power, hearing your universal heartbeat and the uniqueness of who you are. And they bow to you. They thank you and you thank them. Brothers, sisters, we're all here as family as we co-create now with the spring equinox. We allow all of ourselves to come together in unity again. True unity, non-competition, non-hierarchical order. We allow this space as us, the mediums of peace, the mediums of the peacekeepers and peacemakers. So that fire is there for you through the equinox, for you to go back to, to allow yourself to connect to that infinite source of the self, allowing you to connect to the ancestors, the spirit guides, the elders. Breathe in the uniqueness of who you are. Remember that you've come here to experience the seven color, time, no time. You've come here to experience source connection, non-source connection. You've come here to experience pain, happiness, all the in-betweens. And just allow yourself to breathe, trust who you are. And this is something which blocks a lot of people from speaking to their own ancestors. It's true trust of the self. Trust every part of you, the blood, the good and the bad. Allow this new form of self to be formed in this spring. Allow yourself to create the new ancestral fires for all of those future generations we're going to meet as well. The future ancestors in those future lifetimes, those future guides and guardians we haven't met yet. Let's create more fire and will towards them. Let's spread the remembering of the greatness of ourselves to the other parts of the universe, galaxies, void spaces, even to the founder beings who created this galaxy. And I'd like you to connect to those founder beings which are in this world, not all of them, but there are a lot of them on this world at the moment, watching us go through our great change, watching us break bread together again, as Andrew said in the, his Galactic History show. That's what it takes now, forgiveness. Forgive others, forgive yourself, and enjoy this world again. Aho. Aho. That was beautiful, Dale. And what a potent, beautiful reminder to everybody. You know, whether you're listening now or in the future, whether you're in the chat now, remember who you are. You wanted to be here now at the time of the great awakening and great remembering. You wanted to be here now. You're tuning in because there's a resonant frequency with Andrew's work, with our work. That's why you're here. Don't forget why you're here. Don't forget how loved you are by the ancestors and how valued you are. And any contribution to your own healing just has massive ripples for everybody, when we focus on our own healing, and I'm always stressing it's not selfish, to focus on your own happiness, your own joy, ridding yourself of programs that hold you back, finding your absolute, true, authentic you and living from your heart, finding your heart, like Dale was saying, with the forgiveness of yourself and others, but living from that heart-mind connection. And if things are getting on top of you, just go and talk to your heart because your heart also has that eagle eye view. Your heart has that bird's eye view that will, will give you the bigger picture. And there's always going to be a bigger picture because it's an infinite universe. And I know it's hard not to get down and depressed at times like this when things are difficult. But I know you can find joy in simple things too. And aim to find joy, aim to find some joy in prayer or get some joy and reassurance from speaking to the ancestors. And don't dismiss what you hear. Trust yourself and ask your heart. 
There's so many things now, but please, please know how valued you are in this, this path to the fifth world of peace that we're all going down. And we all were our own ancestors and each other's ancestors clearing this path to the fifth world of peace. But please never give up. Please allow that eternal internal flame in your heart never to go out however difficult things might seem don't let that go out because we're here to support you and love you as you are us and that is part of the unity consciousness that we're all trying to find out creating the system it doesn't understand unity consciousness and we create that frequency in a different time space so I thank you all for being here. It's lovely to share this platform with Dale today. Andrews might still make it, I don't know, but it's a, it's these unplanned shows are actually really good for um, allowing us to <laughs> 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 express ourselves. And I love you know the interaction with the uh, with the audience with you guys here is is absolutely beautiful, and we do appreciate all your questions. That's it. And the, that's why I love being in a unique space with someone I've shared ceremonial time with and prayers with and allowing us to go into co-creation of a flow, a state of not having to be anywhere, but be everywhere at the same time. And it reminded me of Sunday when you said to me, when I was going to do the workshop at this uh, festival, like, what have you got planned? <laughs> And I just turned around and looked to her, don't have anything planned. <laughs> and I just went there. <laughs> and it was incredible. It was just a no plan plan going in and whatever was in that moment, whatever I wanted to feel, what I was perceiving was just there. Um, so, yeah. And it would be great probably to talk. So the question someone asked there about the seventh colour, so that's just a rainbow spectrum. So you've got uh, rich, um, all the colours of the rainbow. Uh, that's just talking about experiencing this time and no time with the seven color rays um and obviously we have the eighth color coming at some point which has been andrew's talked about many times as well um so also uh, this reminded me of the psychic surgery session you gave me lately laura about the heart and it reminded me of let's talk about the heart for a minute mm -hmm. it's like the heart is always in a state of love the heart cannot get angry or not forgive um because when you were talking to my heart i was like wow i was like it was a strong motherfucker <laughs> like you just kept kept the same frequency it's like nope i'm not yeah. gonna change i might get a bit clouded or stuck but yeah. that heart energy is yeah let's talk a bit little bit about that well it gets covered up doesn't it by all the dross in life and we forget it's there and then we just go completely to our head and then we're run by whatever it is and it's happened to me many, many times, especially before I was awake and aware enough to recognize my responsibility on this path. But once you discover your heart, you have, yeah, there's responsibility for looking after it. And I, and I don't just mean, you know, physically, health-wise, of course you do, but also for loving it and talking to your heart and then going through the practices that you'll know from Andrew, which is overlaying your heart with a vision of yourself as a fetus in the womb, with a vision of your face to give your um, I am residual presence now, um, connecting your heart, your heart to different parts of your body that need healing. I think I did that with you, Dale, on Sunday. I think we connected your heart to an area of your body that needed healing, like a, a direct portal to the heart. But the heart is there and just, you know, it's got the, the those ancient pericardium waters around it. You can work with the waters of the heart as well. Um, and that's where your flame is. That's where your inspiration is. That's where so much is your authenticity too. But yeah, unfortunately, it does just be just the way the, the world is set up. We're not taught to value our heart. Not like that. And we should be. It should be a teaching at school earlier on. You know, where's where's your heart? Are you going to talk to your heart? My grandmother, when I was about five and I was living with her for a while, 
She used to ask me to ask my tummy what it would like to eat. So I had to like talk down my T-shirt to ask my tummy. Well, this that's great in a way. It, that's a start, isn't it? You know, because we could then just talk to our heart in the same way or talk to different areas of our body. But definitely having that heart connection is um, is what's needed. That's it. And allowing yourself to actually understand that we've been taught to think brain first heart first fight first before love and we've been yeah. taught we've got this nervous system which creates um haunt self-haunting programs uh, defeating energy before you can actually access that so this is how important self-mastery is because when you can slow everything down enough you can actually go in there and listen to what it needs and once you actually realize of how special that heart frequency is how strong it is and it's the core of who you are in here is not who you are the center of who you are is your heart and it's about allowing more of your heart energy to come through and be expressed um and it is like the heart always forgives the heart doesn't hold grudges the heart always loves um so yeah so what i was thinking laura why don't does anybody want to come on um, and maybe talk a little bit about their journey or any questions. It might be good to, if we can get, if anybody wants to call in and have a chat, how was this show? Um, or just an, anything you want to talk about, really. Um, so what we'll do is I'll put the sh the um, link into the chat. And if anybody wants to come on while we're talking, to have a chat with us, ask a question, uh, feel free. So I'm just going to put the link in the chat. And also, oh, um, already... yeah, perfect. There is a question up here somewhere. Yeah. So in the chat right now is the link to come into the studio and come on and ask us a question. Have a chat. How was the Equinox for you? I would like to hear from you. Colors of time. Carolina's yes. asking. Yeah, I'm, I, I answered that one. What did you? Sorry, yeah, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> Where was I don't know where you were, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, because like all of you in the chat, we really appreciate your support. Because um, Carolina's been uh, Carolina. Have I got that right? Anyway, you've, you're always supporting us. You're supporting our posts on Facebook and so on. Um, I noticed that. So I really, we really do appreciate that. So we have just, someone who's just come on now, Sam. Hello, Sam. Good to hear from you. How's it going? Sorry, let me just sit down a minute. Oh. Hey, Sam. Yeah, how's it going? I'm good. Hey, How Sam. are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm in a weird place. Um, Where are you calling from first, Sam? Manchester. England. Okay, we've. Have you been on before? I recognise you. Yeah, I've been on a few times. Yeah, not not yeah. in this format with you guys, but in the past. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm on a bit of a journey with headaches and stress at the moment, and I'm stuck in a bit of a cycle with my patterns. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with them. This most recent bout, um, it kind of came on mid-December. I did a little online event and then didn't do my, didn't take the day off the next day, pushed myself a little bit too far, brought my headaches with a lot of whip cracker energy by going and doing stuff when I should have been resting. I got over that the beginning of the year after a sassafras journey. And then literally within like a 36 hour period, I did my shoulder in. I did that kind of exacerbated headaches, brought on like Punisher vibes. It's just been this unfolding of like this cycle. I think Andrew talked about the other week, the trauma loop that one can move through and cycle through every two to three weeks. I've been stuck in that trauma loop since December. And in truth, these cluster migraine headaches have been here since tw September 2020 and I know it's a big surrender piece for me and 
I know there's deep lying issues. It's not really, they're not really physical. They're symptomatic of something else. And I do this good work. Um, I'm, I'm just finding myself stuck in this cycle of recovery relapse, recovery relapse. I mean, I'm, I'm so like on my patterns right now and like how, how they gang up on me. Like I've got hierarchy. I've got like my anxious, catastrophizing CEO who's like, hey, let's get everything done right now, right now, right now. Then the chain of command goes down to like the vice president, like uh, taskmaster. That then gets handed down to the, um, the whipcracker who initiates and also kind of drives forward. And then me, like the I am, I guess, like is the master going, oh shit, I'll do it all, I'll do it all, I'll do it all. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Um, but kind of the most succinct expression of where I'm at right now is I won't be present I'll push myself, get stressed out bring on these headaches with whipcracker energy then I'll bring in punisher energy and that'll perpetuate the cycle and cause me to aggravate more of these symptoms I'll get better then I'll relapse yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment so you can't get control of your zealot? Because yeah, it's so energy and everything you're saying, yeah? It's all polarised. So you're not able to get control of that and rid yourself of that programme. What do you do for self-care, Sam? Um, and let's just rewind a bit. How much pain are you in? Right now? I mean, I just aggravated the headaches today. I'm actually okay being on the device because light normally aggravates it. Um, what device about, are you on? Sorry, what device? Uh, just a tablet, an iPad. Oh, okay, sorry, that sort of device. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Right, so how often, how many times a week are you in pain and what's it like, one out, out of ten? What's the scale of your pain? Um, it can range between, like, a two and a seven and an eight light okay. from devices is pretty bad so past a certain point during the day like five o'clock i need to kind of abstain from devices i'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting away with this at the moment because i'm speaking to you guys it's not so bad on calls mm -hmm. okay so have you no. gone to the have you sought any medical advice i mean i always deal with the physical side first because one important thing is to get out of pain for anybody before we even look at anything spiritual, the physical side is, is to is to get yourself out of pain. Joy has been the answer. I've actually done mm -hmm. it. I've mm -hmm. got to the place where I've opened my heart, I've danced, I've been in ceremony, I've brought like great art to my to my sense of living. I've found those practices. I'm like, yes, this is it. But then the relapse happens. And so that relapse is, it's like, so there's a, a personality in you which is so strong and potent and powerful, which kind of like manipulates you and it's like an obsessive energy um, where you're doing fine and it'll completely take over you and it'll start trying to bring you into another potential future. And it's got so much potent and power at the moment because you give it that potent and power. Um, and it's about you realizing that you're going to have to start speaking to this fucker and start saying serious words to it. Like if you continue to fucking do what you're doing, I'm going to grab your face and I'm going to start smashing it on the floor. So as it comes in and takes over you, you can actually visualize you grabbing that part of you and start hurting it and saying, every time you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you 10 times more. It's about you. You're going to have to start fighting this part of you because it's like an obsession uh, personality. It's not a disorder, but it's just a part of you which has so much strength. Um, and what's it like for you? Because what's your, um, are you eating meat, vegetarian, vegan? So at the moment I'm plant-based. Um, I've got a protein powder, but I am using eggs. Um, so this is, this is something which I remember from our last session, this is happening again. You're, you're hurting yourself and 
the lack of protein and the lack of Kundalini energy in you, I can just see it. You've got no energy to actually be activated, to actually have strength, to have the power to actually defeat this program. Um, it's like your Kundalini energy is just, it can't open up at all. There's no oomph behind you at the moment. Um, I highly recommend come off the protein powder. Start having some sort of food where you can actually fuel your gut with f fuel, basically. Something your gut can start using um, because that's what I'm feeling. And I think this is all connected to it. That personality in you is karmic and it's a part of you which has starved to death in the past lives. Um, and it's about you realizing that. And I remember there was a crossover in our last session about it. Um, it's taking over you. And it's going to get to the point where you could end up in, in serious health problems because of it. Do you get yeah. um, treatments, Sam? Do you get any self-care treatments, cranial sacral therapy, stuff like that? Um, no, I've, I'm not able to access cranial at the moment. Although I actually do have a friend who's studying it, so I've been thinking about doing an exchange or seeing if he wants to do lower cost sessions yeah anything like that you need some body work to um massage but i'm thinking particularly of your head if you're saying you get cluster headaches um cranial sacral therapy will be really good for that um there's lots of other modalities as well it depends how um how accessible they are to you what do, do you live like in the middle of nowhere or are you no, I'm in the centre of Manchester. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So, so is it... Sorry, is it a financial challenge for you at the moment to get treatments? Yes, it's financial, yeah. Okay. All right. So how, how long have you been just on protein powder at the moment for? Uh, well, my main sources of protein are the powder... I have a couple of eggs a day, and it's uh, plant pastas and beans, legumes. So I'm just of, just about getting my 40 grams of protein every day, but sometimes I'm not very consistent. Yes, I guarantee you, you're not getting 40 grams of protein yeah. by reading you. Um, and this is something I've experienced, brother. You're an intelligent person. You've got a lot of wisdom within you. You've You've learned a hell of a lot. You've learned a lot about teachings. and But for you personally, you're going to have to look at your diet and have a real real journey with it. Even if you have to start eating meat or whatever, it's going to be important that you start nurturing yourself with food, prayer, building yourself up, putting the prayer energy into the food, forgetting protein powders. The only time you should really take protein powder is after a workout when you drink it because it acts as constant fast energy so it builds your muscle straight after a workout um that's going to be when you start eating right brother your life's going to change and i mm. remember having a session with you i think it was a year ago or eight months ago you were in the same position I, and hearing you now and you coming back you've gone into this cycle where you've gone back to that part of you again um so my advice for you brother would be to start eating truly right nutrient nutrient food with loads of protein, loads of fat. Um, also, as well, start clearing out your spinal cord. All your spinal column has got so much dense energy around it at the moment. It's like a toxic soup going from where the tailbone is, up the spine, and round the feet area. So I'd definitely do some clearing on the spine. Maybe the spinal column meditation or something like that would be really beneficial for you. Start clearing out those old libraries of the self your old yous who starved in other lifetimes or the old yous, or the old personalities of yous which take over you, you've got to start resetting your whole body basically into a new frame of rhythm because the rhythm where you're going at the moment is only going to lead to you getting really ill. Next year it could be worse, the year after it could be worse. It could be to the point where you end up in hospital um, and that's how important it is for you, brother. You're a great guy. Like I, I re really respect you and I know you can do it. Can I say that, like, I actually did take your advice after the session. Yeah. So on the call, I remember you said, I said, like, you said real alchemy foods. And I said, yeah. like, animal products. And you said, yeah. And 
when you were speaking against the raw diet, um, it felt like, oh, I felt really challenging. I'm like, is that challenging because it's wrong or is that, is that challenging because I am challenged by it and like my body is kicking back against Dale's advice here. So I went and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy the animal products because I actually did want to eat meat. And I've been on a journey with this, like I've spoke to Andrew about it in, in a few private sessions. He said I had blowback from like an old program uh, when I was trying to switch from raw to animal products. I had some weird things going on. Anyways, I went to the, I went to Sainsbury's and I bought like a whole duck, I bought salmon, I bought eggs, lamb, like piled it all in my basket. And I'm going to the self-checkout and I'm just feeling really hesitant. And then I'm, put, I'm putting it through the checkout and the woman's there like, do you want this? I'm like, uh, yeah, I want this. And I'm like <laughs> hesitating. Then I kid you not, sirens start going in the supermarket. I'm like, okay, this is weird. And then I get out and it just feels strange energetically, like really weird. I've got it on my backpack and I'm walking across this hill and it feels like energetically, like I've got nothing in my bag, even though I've got like kilos and kilos and kilos of meat in it. Just like it's hollow. I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Like, what am I experiencing right now? Like, and combined with that, I keep on getting all these synchronicities, which have been asking like are these synchronicities or false synchronicities it's like raw 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 everywhere like raw it's like 100 percent raw it's like i'm just so confused with my diet so that raw will kill you it will slowly kill you i'm just going to be brutally honest with you brother that's part that's the your shadow and that's a programs completely taking you away from your own self-mastery if you did raw and started experiencing raw you'd end up in hospital and that's a hard thing. You've got to realize what you just said then is your programs. What you were talking about was your programs kicking off saying, no, fuck, he's going to do it. He's going to start actually eating healthy. He's going to have Kundalini energy. He's going to have energy behind him. Um, I've experienced it. So all of those signs of not synchronicity signs about, obviously, it's all the program. And what do you think, Laura, about that story about him? Um with that. Yes, darling. I think I think what you have is something I come across quite a lot when I do um, somatic release in cranial sacral. It's the body protector. It's your protector energy because it doesn't want change for whatever reason. And of course, it's it's been fed um, by the programs, and it is a program really, the protector energy. So it's not wanting you to change. Um, and it will do everything it can to stop that change. But the thing is, this 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 food is fuel, isn't it? So, and um, particularly protein. And it's not just protein and growth. Sorry, it's not just protein and fuel for this physical body, but it's protein and fuel for your light bodies too. Because the stronger your physical body is, the stronger your light bodies will be, and the work you do in the unseen, and particularly dream time as well what are your dreams like um sometimes i remember them sometimes i don't mm. um i actually had a really profound dream the other night i've had a lot of ladybirds coming to me ladybird medicine um mm. that's a real big thing for me um mm -hmm. i had a really gorgeous experience with a ladybird that i saved and had an impromptu ceremony with with my little rose <laughs> altar then they've started coming through a lot more in, in the house and then through my dreams. So yeah, I, I get nice dreams like that, but then Good. there was also just weird jumbled up energy of, you know, regular dreams that I yeah. experience most often as well. Yeah, I think a no, lot of No real good. adventures. No. Really. Yeah, I just think for your, for your actual own evolution and your own self-care is to find a way of getting the protein without the... <laughs> I was going to say without the powder and not just plant, just because there's something else about you that I feel needs the energy of of meat or fish, or you certainly need more of it. And it's, as I say, it will fuel more than just your physical body. And I just think it will elevate your journey and your soul's journey. Um, 
and this this you you're on this repetitive sort of uh loop i think you said and it's it's almost like you want to push the whole thing away step out of that into a it's difficult to say a normal life but sometimes we get so heavily spiritual that we lose our way and sometimes we have to go back to agree of a degree of whatever you'd want to call normality which is doing the basic things you know eating properly getting enough nature getting enough sun would seem to me really important for you a bit difficult at the moment because if <laughs> we haven't had as much sun in this country as we would like but um, the sun I'm feeling you actually need to go out there and do some sort of sun ceremony and put your palms up and get the um, get the sun on your palms and and refuel um, your energy bubble with the sun too and um, it's good that you stop you, you know on the device and you get out and you get in nature because that will get rid of a lot of this um, what do they call it electro smog that we pick up as well, which is detrimental to health. So, and you know, I'm sure you know all the stuff like switching off your Wi-Fi at night and so on, but getting out in nature, um, and I'm sure you know all this already, but just uh, just getting a balanced life so that you're not fighting the old programs, you're out creating them with new routines. Does that yes. make sense to you, Sam? Yeah, I've actually I've been reading the book Atomic Habits on and off for the past year, like implementing a lot of productivity. I'm really into spiritual productivity and try to like meld some more of the practical pieces into the journey. Because for mm -hmm. me, the journey is one of choice and it's, it's rooted in behavior. It's like, what are the quality of your choices right now? Mm -hmm. um, some of them are good, some of them not so good. S some of them unconscious, uh, some of them very conscious. And it's those unconscious choices of the programs which I'm really lasering in on. Like, I've got this little framework, um, the frequency of belief, intention, choice, action, and embodiment. So mm -hmm. the entry point I find into getting to the belief level, which is the program, is, okay, what's happening somatically? Like, oh, I'm experiencing this emotion. What's the action that led to that? And I reverse engineer it and get back to the belief level. And having that chain of cause and effects has been really helpful to really nail them down and get like a picture of how these pieces function. And I've been taking them into EFT most recently, and that's actually been really good for me, like really, really, really good. So I've got, I've got the tools, but one of my patterns also is um, aggressive growth, which is its own self-sabotaging program. Um, very anxiously leaning, which is actually an avoidant program because I lean so anxiously into it that I burn myself out, then I have to detach from the journey again. So it, it, it inhibits the growth. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of really tangled pieces going on at the moment, but I, I can see a lot of them. I, I can see most of the bigger picture I feel now. It's just bringing it all together and breaking this two to three week loop of like, great, new beginning. Oh, fuck, relapsed again, which is why well, I called you guys today. What well, you look at looks yes. back at you, isn't it? What Andrew always says. So that is what you're dealing with is quite intense and in the way you're explaining it. Yeah, I get it, but it's like very detailed and taking a lot of your energy. And what would be really good to take a really big step back from looking at all of that and get into back into to this sort of this normality of the basics, the real basics, your, uh, you know, body work, your diet, nature, yeah? And, and maybe just take a break because that's quite intense what you're doing. I'm not saying don't do the work, you know, whatever, but maybe just take a step back and get a different perspective. Do something entirely different if you can. Step out of looking at that for a while because I think as you change maybe your diet and maybe a little bit of lifestyle, I think you'll come back and see that a lot clearer. Sometimes we can't see the wood for the trees, and I think that's that's a little bit of where you are. I'm not saying your work isn't amazing. You know, what you're doing, people actually looking at their programs is brilliant. But sometimes 
we're just looking at them with another program. <laughs> yep. You see what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's like, okay, I don't want to be at this program party. I'm leaving the program party. I'm going to the, the natural world party for a while until I can come back refueled and have another look at it. So what I would recommend for you as well, so it's going to at least take you a month of eating right to actually feel better, at least mm. 20, 20 to 30 days of eating. It might be hard at first, but do that. Um, I'd highly recommend you start doing some sort of ceremony and ritual to start clearing out the delusions around you because that part of you has taken such control over your life. It's created a soup of delusions in your dream worlds. And it's like your dream worlds are guarded and it's like there's a lot of density to these dream worlds that they're false. And this is something you're going to have to go in as a shaman and start clearing them all out, clearing out the hell realms you've created from your own self around you and start seeing what am I delusional about and start cracking the delusions with your own shaman self and your shaman voice. All these parts of you what don't want to eat, you've got to stand them in front of you and not give them power anymore. You've got to go into the land of remembering again. Start clearing out your dream space and giving you ancestral connection again. Start bringing your guides and guardians as wisdom keepers into your dream worlds. Um, it's all to do with you. It starts with you. It starts with your choice. Um, and I think that's the best advice I could give you, brother. And do some work on your spine. There's Because you're not eating right and you, you've got a lot of low energy, it can attract different other frequencies like parasites. So I'd highly recommend you do some sort of ceremony on your tailbone area and start removing some of them. You can just get rid of them by going in there and, and just taking them out. Um, and that'll help you as well. Um, around your spinal area, there's four different parasites. And it's just about you're going to have to go in there and start digging them out. Start asking yourself, how have I got these inside me? Um, and go through that journey as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the spinal column. Uh, meditation is that one of the most one of the more recent products that you released it's fairly i think we did that quite a few months ago didn't we like ago? at least um, probably about a year ago a year ago yeah yeah, yeah quite you could, always, you could always write your own sam record it so your body hears your own voice just get i don't know how um first you are on anatomy just get an anatomy book i i could i totally could yeah. Um, but it's like another thing. For, it's another thing on a to-do list, and I, I could just like, at this point, I, I'm happy just to like pay for a solution. I think yeah. that would be very beneficial. You hearing Andrew's ours, Laura's voice um, at this at this moment that would be really important. But I think moving yeah. forward and expanding your own, um, then you can even expand your own by saying all of these old libraries of the past are now being cleansed and cleared and start doing that from your intestinal tract, your body, your memory within your bone, because you're going to have to really purge the shit out of yourself when you go through this death process and see it as a death. You've got to let your old selves die and you've got to allow your spirit of you to come forward who eats healthy, has weight on him, has energy behind him, um, starts realizing how fucking strong your programs are. But I believe these programs only have strength is because you don't eat right. Once you start eating right, you'll have more of your access to your own soul, your own self. Um, then you, yeah, then go ahead, Laura. Sorry, I was just going to say, all oh, this is all great, but the first thing you've got to do is give yourself enough energy to do all this, <laughs> which go. is why Dale said, you know, get back to the nourishment, nourish yourself, nourishment. So you yeah. can, you know, fatten up that spiritual body from your nourishment or we'll nourish that spiritual body from just looking after this body. Even even hearing that now, knowing that, like, there, there's still a lot of confliction in me, but I know that's just part of the greater process of moving through this. Um, in, in terms of the food piece, because I have oscillated so much and it does, it, it does genuinely weigh me down a lot. Like I kind of oscillate between like getting into the meats and I'm like, ah, oh, it kind of makes me feel tired. It's hard. It's harder to get up in the morning. 
And I'm like, maybe go a little bit more plant-based. Then it's like, let's like go all plant-based. It's like, let's try raw. And I'm like, why am I so raw again? That That is, again, your obsessive part of you taking over you. That's full-on obsession. And that's something you're going to have to understand, which comes into you, is that program has the obsession as well. And you're going to have to tell it to shut up. Even when it starts saying, oh, I, I feel a bit more groggy because I eat meat, it's just bullshit. You're going to have to tell that part of you, I'm not listening to you. I'll eat meat. You Obviously, when you start eating, probably there's going to be discomfort because your body's got new genomes, bacteria. It's going to feel weird, maybe. But afterwards, when you get used to it, you'll be fine. But when you go through that obsession process about, oh, this is making me feel like this, this is making me feel like this, that's the program completely won again. All your energy has been taken away from you. Slaps, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I've got you, basically, the program yeah. said. So okay. basically, this was like a taper off. Last This began last year, like, because I was eating meat, and then my body just slowly started rejecting it. Is that the program just sneaking back yes. in, which I've, like, which yeah. I've empowered through, like, yeah. calling yeah. it synchronicity and internal guidance and wisdom? I think so. I mean, um, Tina's just put eat pineapple with the meat because you get enzymes, or which is a great idea, Tina. Also, I think Andrew suggested digestive enzymes actually for everybody would yeah, be a I good used to idea. With every meal. Yeah, to have some digestive en enzymes, they might help. And yeah, don't overload it. Maybe a little bit in the beginning but definitely i mean i'm the same as dale it sounds like that is your program or protector program will stop you doing anything it's got so into like this this polarization or this this cell it sort of it, it's finding it difficult to come back to balance and come back to to normal what did you eat as you were growing up what were you brought up on uh just like standard western diet like oven chips and like turkey dinosaurs and yeah. when i was young that I kind was. Of thing. <laughs> yeah yeah, you, know what? yeah. It's, I mean, you could go <laughs> if your body if you could cope with that that's that's uh, that's what i'm saying just like something really base and normal i mean i'm in uk too um i'm a bit older than you but it was always like meat two veg and potato wasn't it probably in your in dale's time too so <laughs> that's not not Nothing wrong with going back maybe to more that way. Okay, doesn't matter if it, it's turkey dinosaurs or whatever they are, but anything that gets you out of this this selling, this this extremism in food. And, and the, just um, it as well. I mean, yeah, do you want to find some joy in what you're eating? I mean, do you remember when you last had a burger and you enjoyed it? Um, I can't remember the exact one, but I, I was ordering when I transitioned back to meat four years ago. I was ordering like really nice, bougie, organic, grass fed meat, and it was yeah. fucking amazing. Like big yeah. short ribs full of fat, amazing. Yeah. I had like big healing responses, it cleared up knee issues, it cleared up shoulder issues, like just the fat. So I know yeah. the healing power of it. The reason yeah. why I've kind of fallen back into this this place is it was such a gradual tapering last year of my body going a bit it's a bit heavy it's a bit heavy it's a bit heavy i was doing lots of quantum healing and was like oh maybe like my dna is changing maybe it's like it's a transition back to a lighter diet maybe i need to do that maybe that's like what my physiology wants and then i found myself in this really weird conflicted place with all kinds of programs and stuff going on yeah, that's that's what it sounds like. And quantum work and all that is fabulous, but your main aim is to keep you healthy here on Earth. And then you can do all the other work. But we gotta get the, the grounded Sam on Earth before to give you the fuel to do all the other stuff without it leading you off down another you... sort of extreme path so get a um, a plan in action i feel feel for you talking about the no plan plan show <laughs> get some sort of get a plan. plan going on where you have a schedule you know what you're going to eat you know what ingredients you need to get for the week 
You could even do slow cooker where you could have lunch and dinner with the same food so you don't have to cook loads. You could do like loads of different meats, all different vegetables, put them in a slow cooker. That's lunch and tea already done. But then you obviously you have your eggs for breakfast. Maybe have four eggs, five eggs instead of two. Start up, just just start upping protein, upping protein. Um, and it's going to take you at least a month to start feeling right. When those parts of you start kicking off, which they will, they'll make you really obsessive about what's going on. Just tell them you're going to have to start calling them out and saying no. I'm not giving you power anymore. And when I get my energy back, I'll give you less and less power. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I Got think it. you There's... you can do it if you don't get distracted with what they're trying to do, what the programs are trying to do. Go to your heart. There's actually a really powerful piece you shared. Sorry, Laura. I, I, really, okay, I, no, no. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Uh, but I really wanted to ask this, yeah. uh, Dale, because it's a really powerful piece he shared a few times. I'm just wondering, Dale, if you'd mind um, offering the piece that you shared again around you was doing a particular piece of inner work and you went back event by event by event until you chased the program out of your parasympathetic on all the way back to source. Would you mind, could you structure that as a process for me? I could take uh, yeah, it'll take take a quite a while to properly go into it, but it's basically you can observe, find where your inner program was created or that part of that personality was created. Go back month by month, declaring that it's not a choice anymore. You're clearing out the past. You're giving yourself natural dream space, and start. It's like the say the lack example for lack. I now go to January 1997 and clear out all of the lack consciousness from January. I no longer allow lack as a frequency of mine anymore. It's not a choice of mine. I show you my future of how not in lack I am. I send that to you in the past. Um, loads of different prayer where you're denying it from the body. You're clearing it from your past self. Uh, you're giving yourself source connection. Then you go pack month by month, month by month, year by year. For you, it's going to take three times. Your program's so strong, you're going to have to do what I did with the lack, where you do it three times. Uh, once that's done the third time, the program's just going to be re go into that echo mode. Um, and it is, it, it, you, you go blue in the face. Um, like I was like, for fuck's sake, <laughs> what I was doing when I got to the third year, I was like, I can't fucking do this shit anymore. <laughs> I was like, taking myself to the float and keep doing it. Then obviously that last one. Um, I brought all my selves of those conscious, lack conscious selves around me. Um, and I started, I think I put loads of galactic central suns all behind them and started illuminating into the parasympathetic, like residual memory. That was like the last part for me. And all of a sudden my uh, lack part of me jumped out of me and, and shut the door. It was so, so fucking funny. It was the last session. And I just said to it, fuck off. And I was like, yes. It just literally jumped out of me and shut the door and went right. <laughs> but I still deal yeah. with whispers. So that program's mainly gone, but I still have a little whisper there. There's always going to be some sort of whispers going on. Then you've got to internalize future selves. So you've got to send prayer energy to the next month or the next month after. Have a fire saying, I've sent prayer energy to my future self. So in the months of January, I'm not in lack. February, I'm not in lack. Maybe do three years at a time. Then in three years, have another ceremony. So you're going to have to do the past. You're going to have to do the present. Then you're going to have to do the future as well. And that's how fucking hard it is to break some of these programs. Some of them are easy. You can do them by just changing as a human, being a better person. But some of them have a fucking hold on you. Like Laura and I know some of our personalities and programs. It's like they're so subtle and fucking smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah like tina says eat pro do a month before you do that type of work do That's at least a month and have two months of eating protein before you do that because you're gonna need thousands you're gonna have to double the amount you eat doing all of that stuff because you're gonna be burning thousands of calories by doing that inner work yeah beautiful cool. bro what have that you got any last questions at all <laughs> before we say goodbye? Um, no, that's pretty complete. Uh, no, just just a lot of gratitude. Thanks for spending so much time with me. You've offered Pleasure. me a lot. 
like a lot. I'm really, really grateful. Uh, thank you guys. This is awesome. Thank you, bro. Thank, thank you, you, Sam. Great to see you, Sam. Speak Enjoy to you soon, brother. Yes. Right. Enjoy the meat. Send us photos of your nourishment. Yeah, <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually got a couple of ducks in the freezer. There we Christmas. go. Get them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank okay, you so cool. much, Sam. See you soon, bro. Right. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <Yeah. Sam. laughs> so, what a show. What a no plan show. show. That You're was my a fun show. show. Yeah. Yes. So, Laura, how can people get a hold of Laura Massey if they want some personal time with you? If they'd like a session to go around the ancestors. <laughs> Fire. Personal time. That doesn't sound um, right, did it? <laughs> it? Okay. Yeah. So, if um, I'm an ancestral medium. If you'd like to come and meet your ancestors with me around a fire or a session for any other thing, self-empowerment, uh, shamanic practices and getting mastery through that, um, I am at laura2feathers at gmail.com. That's with the number two. Also contact me if you're interested in combined. Um, and I've also told you where it is on the website, twofeathersmedicine.com forward slash combined healings for starting to take bookings now we would love to see you there um thank you to all to sam who came on for everybody in the chat for staying with us and asking the questions and commenting wonderful and to you dale for being an awesome bro um and my business partner and friend and all the rest of it and thank you to your mum for coming on too that was a nice surprise so sorry you missed the show, Andrew. Stop with yes. this car somewhere. He's I late think. again. He's always yes. late. <laughs> <laughs> but Andrew has. So what we're doing is the Thursday show is moved later. Um, so it makes it available for more people, especially the other side of the Atlantic in the US. So Dale and I won't be on that because that's our midnight. And that is just a little bit late for us all. But tomorrow night, we will be back with the Paranormal Rangers and we're doing the uh, Navajo history, which should be amazing. So it'd be great to support those guys too because they have so many wonderful experiences to share as well. Um, I think that the, says it all. So as well, something to mention about ad Adventures into Reality. So if you do want to come and get a reading with Andrew and come on the show, you have to go over to Rumble, and it's only $5 a month for the membership, I believe. Um, so if you want to go over to Rumble, the Galactic Historian channel, and if you want to sign up for the $5 a month, and you're able to come on the reading show as well. So if you do want a reading tomorrow, sign up for the membership. It's only $5 a month, and it's available on Rumble. Thursday, so, not tomorrow. Thursday, sorry, yeah, not tomorrow, yeah, Thursday. Tomorrow's paranormal, yes. same time. And if anybody would like any psychic surgery sessions with myself, if you feel stuck, lost, want a reading, need a hand or my many hands, um, head over to daletobin.com and book a psychic surgery and soul retrieval session with myself. Um, psychic surgery training as well is available one-to-one -one, and there's a product on my website as well. Just want to say thank you for everyone and all the comments. Um, we're getting some great response, great people interacting with the shows at the moment. We really appreciate all your comments and all your feedback as well. Yeah, and please like and subscribe. And if you can subscribe to the Rumble membership, it all helps. It helps us and Andrew uh, get the message out there. And after all, we're, we're all on this road to the fifth world of peace. That's what it's about, this road to unity consciousness and, and helping each other so every like every share every subscribe is a step in that direction thank you so much thank you guys bro bye bye, bye everyone